Hello, this is uh, just a short video uh, about these little high voltage modules that you can buy in various places online at the moment. Uh, I mean, other people have mentioned them. Uh, Big Clive uh, did, did a, uh, a section on one uh, showing how it worked. Uh, these are sold as all sorts of things by uh, advertisers, uh, including being claimed to be stun gun modules and all sorts of silly things. Um, I believe they are actually just surplus gas ignition modules for gas fires, gas hobs, that type of thing. And they actually work perfectly well from 1.5 volts. Now, I'm going to put that on there just to hold it in place so it's not getting dragged about as I move the wires. Uh, the big battery is just a kind of balance weight, uh, ballast rather. And I'm just going to tape it down so it doesn't jump about as I move the battery wires and mess up the uh, output wire positioning. Now this, to start with, is just at 1.5 volts, a single AA cell. I've got one of the wires just taped on to stop it jumping about and make it easy to hold. I'm going to turn the light off so the sparks are more visible. Get a well insulated screwdriver to be able to prod the wires. And uh, power it up. You see, that's with 1.5 volts. It needs about a centimetre or so. I'm not holding it particularly steady. Uh, this. You see, it can occasionally jump much higher distances, but not very often. Now the air is already. It's getting on for 10 mil possibly, but when it gets down about five or six, mil, then you get a nice continuous stream of sparks. It's difficult to see with the flashing with exactly how high the two wires are. But, uh, I'll try it now at three volts and persuade the batteries to stay together, which is in two AAs. Stand on, stand on one end so I can hold the wire on top of the with the, the one finger. That should give a bit more output, but most likely it's more for higher frequency. No, I don't want to work at all that. And the wire in the tape moved. No, no, it doesn't want to go like that. Well, they are brand new batteries, so it shouldn't be a problem. Try it back on the single battery. Yeah, that appears to have killed it, unless I've got a bad contact in there. As I was saying, a lot of the gas fire ones use a single 1.5 volt cell for power. And I can imagine these things getting messed up quite easily by excess voltages, even though some of the advertisers make ludicrous claims. Charge. Too much to see. Just before. That's it, three volts. Oh, yeah, you can actually just about see. Hmm. Yeah, let me just turn the uh, light off now. Some, some background light, but uh, hopefully you, you should be able to see the brush, brush discharge. Just before the point it fires. Yeah, the only problem was the positive wire had moved in the tape, it had slid off the terminal. I don't want to deliberately blow it up. So 
but I'll, I'll go up to a, a single lithium cell, which at the moment that's, that's about four volts. And this is one, uh, one of the fake ones, it claims to be oh, 4250 milliamp hours. It's actually, if you put it on tester, it's about two amp hour. It's typical for anything above a two and a half amp hour. They just don't seem to exist. Um, there's, but there's massive amounts that are labelled with stupid ratings. Right, so that's that's now on four volts. Uh, but you can actually hear a faint whistling now from the inverter, the first stage inverter that charges the internal capacitor. And then like, <laughs> there's a lot of ozone coming off it as well. There's a very strong smell of ozone. Not much more voltage though. Ah, there you go. Look at that brush discharge now. Yeah, you can see it ionising the air between it. All the air is actually air in that air region is ionised. It's more conductive. That's up to about four volts. Now. I'd say that's, that's an absolute limit. It's approaching twenty millimeters, but it won't, it won't necessarily start until the gap's a little bit smaller than that. It, it then survives with a bigger gap due to the ionisation effect. Uh, quite brush discharge off the end of the, the, the cut wires got sharp ends. In fact, let me just try that as an experiment. So we can get a, a, a good brush discharge off the thing, the battery disconnected. We just splay the ends of the output wires rather than leave them insulated. It should massively increase the amount of ionisation. Can't see very well. Um, not uh, after a minute of the sparks, but anyway, they are spread to some extent. Yeah, that module is very hot. Now. Well, not very hot, but the air casing is hot. It obviously doesn't like running continuously at four volts, so it could kill it. Anyway, oh yeah, you see the end. Hopefully, see the end of the wires glowing. For the dis current discharges. Now they spread out more. There's quite a decent voltage on that. It's actually reduced the starting that, uh, voltage slightly because the points are discharging the wires to some extent. You'll see the same effect in the uh, Van de Graaff generator. Put a little wire spike on top of it, and the spark distance it can produce goes down to next to nothing from, from something like eight, um, 10 inches, probably. Anyway, that's it. That's on four volts. I don't want to go any higher uh, as I don't want to destroy the module, and it is getting quite warm. But yeah, I don't know what temperature it actually is, but. Uh, it's probably only about 40 degrees that sees exter see externally, but seeing it's an encapsulated module, the internal components could be quite a lot hotter. Yeah. Yeah, it's just somewhere around 40 degrees. Depending on the hottest part I've seen. Oh yeah, down that side there. That's that's the hot spot. Yeah, it's over forty degrees, so forty-seven degrees it picked at one spot. So that's the external temperature. The internal temperature on, on the actual uh, components that are getting hot could be far higher, and it's just taking time for the heat to 
spread through and dissipate the case. So no, I won't destroy it. So I'll uh, close it at that just for one last last spark. Um, I'll twist the wires back up just to see what difference that makes again now. But rounded electrodes give the best effect, actually. In fact, let me turn that one back on themselves so they've got a round end rather than... Um, rather than this point, just to see if we can get a bit of contrast between the two. That gap is now almost exactly 20 millimetres. And it, with the wires folded back on themselves, so there's no protruding points at all, uh, it will start at that straight away using this 4 volt supply. Anyway, uh, it's uh, something to remember if you're using high voltage uh, or playing with high voltages. Uh, a round electrode will reach spark voltage is far easier than a pointed one or just a cut end wire because uh, the some of the, uh, the charge is, is dissipated into the air if it's a point due to ionization effect that's why uh, van de graaff's and uh, you normally the probes that are used near and whatever are always uh, uh, rounded to minimize brush discharges so yeah just folding the wires back on themselves increases or helps with the sparking the wind.